as I've, like everyone else, struggled with the questions of existence, the expansion of the universe characterizes the existence of reality more than anyone else. I, I come to you to help understand that. I think that the discovery of the expansion of the universe is one of the most profound discoveries, human discoveries of all time. I think if you put it in context to what we knew just over a hundred years ago, um, the universe at that time, as, as we knew it, consisted of our own sun, a star, planets, eight known at the time that went around that sun, our, our own sun. And we lived in a, a collection of stars known as the Milky Way. We didn't know at that time if there were other collections of stars like the Milky Way. We could look up at the night sky and see a few thousand stars if we're lucky to be in a dark place. Uh, and that's pretty much what we knew. The discovery of the expansion completely revolutionized our thinking about the universe. Suddenly, the universe no longer is static and unchanging. Um, we had thought that the only 400 years earlier that the sun was the center of the universe. We had only recently learned at the beginning of the last century that the sun is not the center of the universe. Um, but not only that, but that the universe is expanding, that there are other galaxies in addition to our own Milky Way galaxy. There are probably a hundred billion such galaxies that are taking part in an overall expansion of space. Space is dynamic, it changes over time, means in a sense we can run the movie back in reverse and learn something about the origin of the universe, wow. the age of the universe, uh, and the size of the universe increased enormously. So it was one of the most profound, in my, in my view, discoveries of all time, and, uh -huh. and completely changes our, our own perspective as human beings. I've certainly felt that way, and therefore I think it's really important that we want to understand how this happened, how this revolution in thinking happened. So. Tell us the historical the story about how this remarkable uh, vision was, was discovered. So there were a number of pieces that had, of course, to come together. Um, I'll, I'll start the story by, by um, speaking of the astronomer Edwin Hubble, who was here, in fact, in Pasadena, California, um, had come out to the Mount Wilson Observatory, a few miles from here, the mountains in, in Pasadena, California to make measurements at that time of objects that were known as nebulae. Nebula is just a, a Latin word, it means fuzzy. <laughs> People didn't know what they were. And the question at that time was, are there systems like our own Milky Way galaxy? Could these nebulae actually be distant versions of the Milky Way galaxy? Or maybe they were just regions within the Milky Way where stars were, new stars were forming, so much closer. Um, and Edward Hubble set out to look at these nebulae. He took a series of photographic plates. In those days, we didn't have digital detectors like we do with video cameras now and um, uh, solid state detectors. They were large photographic glass plates. And he took photographs of a series of these nebulae over time. And what he found was that there were points of light within the nebulae that changed their brightness over time. Now, what we know about most stars is we look up in the sky, we don't see stars change in their brightness, at least over a human lifetime. There are no changes that we can discern. But it had been known for a while, a few hundred years, that um, there is a class of star, it's called the Cepheid variable, that does change its brightness on timescales of maybe two up to a hundred days. So on a, on a very rapid time scale, in fact, um, you can measure how those stars are changing in brightness. And they do it in a very characteristic way. It's not just a random change, but they, they increase in their brightness rather quickly, and then they decrease fairly slowly, and then the cycle repeats, periodic nature. And what Hubble was able to find was that these points of light he was seeing on his photographic plates, some of them displayed this characteristic of what we knew as Cepheid variables. And these stars have a, a unique property. Uh, it turns out that how fast they change in their brightness is directly related to how bright the stars are. It's a, it's a um, superb relationship, very tight one-to-one -one relationship between how stars vary in their light and how bright the stars actually are. 
Um, there had, this relationship between the brightness and the period had been discovered uh, in the early 1900s by an astronomer at Harvard named Henrietta Leavitt. Um, and what the relationship allows you to do is if you can measure how bright the stars appear and then how fast they're varying, you can compare them to Cepheids in our own galaxy that are near enough we can measure their distances. And then just using the inverse square law of light, you can determine the distance to the object that you are measuring. And that's the technique that Hubble used. What he was able to show was that the stars in these other nebulae were outside of the Milky Way. They were significantly more distant. And so that there were other galaxies in their own right. Um, now this shows that there are galaxies beyond the Milky Way. Correct. And so this is a sudden realization that the universe is bigger, maybe substantially, than our local galaxy that we're That's in. That's right. So the universe is no longer defined by the extent of the Milky Way galaxy. There are other galaxies in addition to the Milky Way considerably further away. Right. And that was a remarkable result on its own. But he didn't stop there. What Hubble realized was that there had been previous measurements made of... Um, uh, taking spectra of these nebulae, which showed that the um, light coming from these galaxies, you disperse it into a, a spectrum, was actually shifted relative to a spectrum you would measure in a laboratory on the Earth. And it turned out that the more distant galaxies, galaxies where he had measured these Cepheid variables, knew they were further away than other galaxies, had the, the biggest shifts in their spectral lines. And what turned out to be um, the reason for this is that the universe is expanding. So galaxies are, the galaxies that are most distant are moving away from us the fastest. Those that are closer, they're moving away from us also, but not quite at the same velocity. And the further and further out you go, the faster the expansion. So not only did he show that the universe was expanding, but it was expanding in a sense at a, a rate that was related to the distance. So that's a separate a, a uniform expansion. Point. The further away a galaxy is, the faster it's moving. Uh, it turned out there are a few galaxies nearby to us that are moving towards us because they're interacting gravitationally with the Milky Way galaxy. And there are other handful of galaxies that are also interacting gravitationally with other galaxies. But we've now measured a so-called red shift for these galaxies for literally million uh, or so objects. And, um, and they're all red shifting. They're all participating in this outward expansion of the universe. So the, the implications of it, it, Hubble measured an empirical relationship it just tells you that the further away a galaxy is, the, the faster it's moving. Um, the implication of that result, if you put it in the context of Einstein's general theory of relativity, is that the universe is expanding and has been expanding for a considerable period of time. So, now we have this remarkable result that the universe is much bigger than we expected. It's expanding and expanding at a rate proportional to distance. So you seem to have the the uh, parameters so that you can run the movie backwards and be able to estimate when that first point was. Correct. So in order to determine what the age of the universe is, you need to, have, so if there were no matter in the universe, the universe were essentially just coasting, it would be in, inversely uh, the age would be inversely proportional to the rate at which the universe is expanding. It's a little more complicated than that because there's matter in the universe, and matter uh, interacts by gravity and will slow down the expansion. So you need to know how much matter there is in the universe. And then there turns out to be another complication, which is, in fact, what we've learned in the last decade or less, is that the universe is actually accelerating, and you need to know the amount of uh, material that is causing the universe to accelerate before you can calculate the age accurately. But, but what the, the measure of the expansion rate gives you is the ability to run this movie backward and, and, and see how long the universe has been expanding. What is its age? And what is its age? It's about 13.7 billion years.